Hi, welcome to Paiskur Academy, myself Shekhar. In this lecture, I am going to discuss the basic insights of inverter. What is that? Inverter. Yes, the inverter what you are using at your home. Whenever power goes off, it comes to rescue us, right? I mean, power backup will be provided from the inverter. Through battery, obviously. So, I will give you the brief insights of that inverter. This is very crucial and important aspect for every electrical engineer. Rather, not for electrical engineer, I should say, every human being who is using inverter, okay, or you want to buy an inverter, then also this video will be helpful for you. You will get some interesting insights, okay. Let's get started. Before I start, I think we'll discuss, we'll start our discussion with function of an inverter. What is the function of an inverter? I think the block, block diagram is very clear. It is saying it converts DC to AC. So it is converting DC to AC. That's what inverter. To be more precise, it is converting DC to variable AC. Okay, what's that? Variable AC. Means we can get, with the help of this inverter, we can get any value of AC, I can control the AC voltage, magnitude can be controlled as well as frequency can be controlled. We can get any desired values. Okay. So this is what the function of an inverter. It converts AC to variable, sorry, DC to variable AC. Okay. Both magnitude and frequency. Applications of inverter. There are many applications. You write in the comment section. What are the applications known to you? Okay, don't write common applications. Try, try, try doing some research and give it in the comment section the applications of the inverter. That's your task. Okay. Let's see. Inverter output. What do we expect? Inverter output should be what? What kind of nature do we expect from an inverter? Let's see that. Yes, it should be bidirectional because AC means what? alternating or you can say bidirectional it should be bidirectional output and average value of the output must be zero output ac output must be zero volts average value not output average value of the output must be zero this is another important criteria third and most important thing sinusoid output what's that sinusoid output let me just uh, make one point here Whenever you go to market to buy an inverter, some inverters will be costing same maybe capacity, some inverters will be costing two less, maybe 2000 or something. The same capacity inverter uh, from another company, maybe another model will be costing around 6000 or maybe 5000. Huge difference will be there. Why is that difference? Why you are getting such a kind of huge difference? That's also that also I'll explain very shortly. So this is the third important aspect which is sinusoid output. Now obviously we'll have a question, sir why sinusoid? I think you know the answer, I already discussed in our Y series questions. Why sinusoid, why 50 hertz in India, why 11 kV, why AC in turn? There are many Y series interesting questions which I discussed. I'll give the link in the description, you check the link in the description so that you will get to know more information about these Y series question very interesting series anyways to continue these are the key aspects what we expect from an inverter okay let's see whether we are able to get it or not okay so before we go to that aspect let me just give you some basic types of inverters what are the types yes according to the source of inverter obviously it is DC source, but, but DC source can be voltage source or it can be a current source. So if it is a voltage source at the DC input, so we'll call it as a voltage source inverter. If it is a current source, we'll call it as a current source inverter. That's it. Okay. VSI, CSI. Of course, it is also called as voltage fed and current fed. Okay. Anything, any name you can call. It doesn't matter. Some people call it as a voltage fed inverter. Some people call it as a voltage source inverter. All means the same. VSIs are most commonly used. CSIs are very rarely used for industrial purposes. 
you check the differences anyways uh, this is based on the uh, according to source of inverter let's see another category based on the type of the load if you're using a single phase inverter see these types are just basics basic idea to get a basic idea okay there are a lot many other types based on that type of load single phase bridge inverter three phase bridge inverter okay single phase and three phase loads okay you can have two phase you can have six phase you can have any number of phases inverter but these are the commonly used normally on the fundamentals rather okay and in the single phase half bridge half and full bridge okay so this full bridge you know full bridge right okay not full bottle full bridge full bridge is popularly called as h bridge inverter which is yeah it's star important h bridge inverter because the full bridge inverter will look something like this this is what the full bridge inverter okay so means complete full voltage will appear across the output that's what is called as a full bridge simple so in case of half bridge only half voltage will apply half voltage will occur at the output then why it is called as a h bridge yes i think you got it yeah we have h the formation of h within it so it is called is it is also called as h bridge inverter okay and three phase inverter is based on the mode of operations it can be categorized into two types that's okay let's go to the next one according to the output voltage shape it is categorized into three types square wave sine wave and modified sine wave inverter we have these three types okay and out of all these i'll talk about all these later very shortly i mean so square wave is the cheapest of all okay suppose if you buy a normal household inverter of maybe 675 va then it may cost around 4000 rupees same capacity sine wave inverter will cost you around 6000 okay 2000 difference will be there because you are getting a sine side sine side output that's what you want right that's what we want for residential purposes but don't think that you know uh, sir i am getting uh, 2000 less expensive uh, same inverter i am getting for 2000 less expensive square wave inverter should i go for it that depends on the requirement suppose if you are using only light bulbs as loads then you can use these square wave inverters because nowadays all are led bulbs right but if you are using fan as loads for the inverter then you have to go for sinusoid if you give square wave output to the fan the ceiling fan or maybe table fan it may not work properly okay the life of the fan will reduce for the square wave inverter so don't compromise you know if you compromise when you're buying an inverter then your your appliances will be damaged okay likely to reduce its life's lifetime okay so be careful when you're purchasing inverter sine wave whether you're getting a sine wave or square wave you should be careful and there's a trade-off between sine and square wave that's what modified sine wave I'll talk about this very very soon okay so the performance means which inverter is best inverter will give the performance indice of any inverter is normally specified in terms of THD means whether the inverter is best or not you will you will you will uh, understand the performance by THD what is this THD? T for total harmonic distortion. THD total harmonic distortion means how many harmonics are present in that output is the key aspect. We want harmonics should be as less as possible. Okay. So based on this THD, you will judge the performance of the inverter. Okay. Obviously, pure sinusoid will have zero percent of THD. That's why it is the best. If you talk about square wave inverter, it will have the THD almost 50%. Exactly speaking, it's around 48.8%. Okay. It will have the THD. Modified sine wave inverter, it can range from, you know, anywhere between 0 and 30%. Okay. That depends on what kind of modification you're making. I'll just show you very shortly. 
Okay, there is a key aspect here, there is a key element when you are judging, one of the key elements. There are many other key elements, this is one of the key elements. Okay, now let's see what is the difference between these square wave, sine wave and modified sine. Yes, you can see the inverter block diagram, simple block schematic and the input, output. Okay, so this is what usually we will get the output. Output is what? Output is a square wave, this is what usually we will get. But what do we want? We want a sinusoid. We want a sinusoid, not a square wave. But we are getting square wave, not a sinusoid. There is a huge difference between a sinusoid and the square wave, right? There is a huge difference. Okay. But still, what, what, what can be done? This signal can be converted into this form easily. Okay. Rather than the sine form, this form is very easy. Okay. I think you are clear. So, to control the output voltage, this is what we are getting. Ideally, we should get this, but we are getting this. So, to control the output voltage, what we'll do is we'll change the width of the pulse. We'll change the width of the pulse. Okay. So, as width of the pulse is changing, output voltage will change. Okay. So, this width of the pulse changing is called what? Pulse width modulation. Don't think that pulse width modulation means something great or that this no you're changing the width of this pulse pulse width modulation that is it okay nothing beyond that anyways so pulse width model by changing this you will get a variable voltage but this will lead to increase the harmonics further thd will be more when you are having this kind of a shape thd what 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 does thd gives the indication uh, what is a thd is indicating THD is indicating how close is a signal towards a sinusoid is this close to sinusoid what you see is this close to sinusoid no there is a huge difference between this and I mean this is sinusoid the earlier one right but what if instead of this instead of pure sinusoid what if you get this kind of a form yes this one this is a little close to sinusoid right this is a little better one little close to sinusoid we have steps here this is what modified form of sinusoid okay i think got a difference now this is a modified form of sinusoid and which is close to sinusoid and it has different levels okay and this is simply you can say square wave or a quasi square wave okay you can say it as a quasi square wave you can change the width of this pulse. This is exactly speaking a square wave. Okay. Width of the pulse we are controlling. Tell me how many levels this is having. What is meant by levels? I think uh, level 1, level 2 floors. Right. When you are checking, when you are catching stairs. You will count right. Level 1, level 4 in the lift. This is level 1. This is level minus 1. So total 2 levels are there. But what if it is this? Means I am just controlling the width of the pulse. Then how many levels it has? Tell me how many levels? Three levels it is having. Zero level, one level, minus one level. Means above, above zero one, below zero another. Okay. So this is three level inverter. And what if you have multiple levels? Something like this. If you have these modified form, then you'll have more levels. More than three levels will be there. Okay. And here you're controlling these. Then you're controlling the width of the pulse to control to get the variable output voltage sometimes you may have yes this kind of uh, breaking of the pulse multiple pulse width modulation so far we were dealing with earlier we were dealing with only one pulse and we were changing the width of the pulse but rather in the next cases we may have to go for multiple pulse for a better control of the output okay but this is also having a higher THD these are all are having high THD. To reduce the THD or to get the better THD, okay, to get a better THD, then instead of using these pulse widths of equal value, we'll go for this kind of pulse width modulation. There's a slight difference between this and the earlier one. What is the difference? Here, in, in case of earlier one, all the pulse widths are having equal in width, but this one 
is having different pulse widths at different positions. At the beginning, we have small pulse width, then slowly increasing pulse width is increasing in a sinusoid pattern. Okay, I means slowly sine wave is what? Sine wave slowly increases like this and maximum decreases like this and negative like this, right? So here also the pulse widths are slowly increasing at this maximum here pulse width and decreasing and negative like this. So this is what we'll call it as sine PWM technique. Okay, sine PWM technique, it is having a better THD. Okay, though it has, I think uh, you'll talk about that sine PWM later, but this is having a better performance in, th in terms of THD. I think you are clear of the points. The main points what I want to discuss based on the types, based on the voltage shape, you have uh, different types, square wave inverter, sine wave inverter, and modified sine wave inverter. Okay. So modified sine wave inverter, sir. Again, we can have different types. We can call it as a two-level inverter. Means the output voltage is simply square wave like this. Multi-level inverter means it have more levels. That's what modified form of sine wave like this. This is multi-level inverter and it is an active research area. People have been doing research from a lot many years, but still it is still an active research area. Okay. And based on different PWM techniques, this is also an active research area. Okay. Based on different PWM techniques, we can categorize again them into different types. There are many other, you know, it's not just these. I just discussed about PWM. Only one pulse width is changing and multiple pulse width modulation and sine PWM, sine pulse width modulation. And that's it. These are all about the basic types. By the way, did you subscribe to the channel? You're enjoying the lectures? Then subscribe to the channel. You'll get more videos, right? And if you enjoy the lecture, thumbs up and share this video with your friends. And if you want full courses on power electronics, machines, networks, control systems, check the link in the description. You'll get the full courses at very less price. That's it. That's about this lecture. Thank you. See you in the next lecture.